Hello Chili Pepper users, Ray here, and today we're going to talk about how to move a widget in Chili Pepper from JS Fiddle into Cloud9. Why? Because Chili Pepper is composed of widgets, almost entirely. Here we have the uh, workspace Tiny G open, and every single element you see inside of here is a widget. The 3D viewer is a widget, Axes, Tiny G, Serial Port JSON Server, these are all widgets. And then also the things that you actually know to be widgets, like zip whip, auto level, macro, everything else you see here. So it's kind of like Russian nesting dolls, because you've got widgets within widgets. Like Tiny G here actually has a widget inside here called configure. And that's what we're going to use today to port over. So we've got this configure Tiny G. I'm going to press this drop down arrow. You're going to find this in most widgets. They all have this drop down in the upper right. I'm going to press pub sub for this widget, and then I have to close the thing itself to get these links. So we have a fiddle URL, and we have a standalone URL. And if I press the fiddle URL, I'm going to end up here in JS Fiddle, where we have, you know, the uh, HTML in the uh, upper left, followed by the CSS, JavaScript in the lower left, and then this fourth uh, preview here. I'm going to have to rerun it right now. This fourth box here is a preview of the widget itself. Now, if you take this link and you add to the end of it, the slash show slash light, you get a full page preview. And this is how Chili Pepper has been working up until now, and it still kind of does this, where it takes this full page preview and then squeezes it inside a tiny little div in here. And this is how we do this. And then Tiny G widget can load up the configure Tiny G widget, and we get widgets within widgets. Inception, Russian nesting dolls, take your cultural re reference pick. So let's get started. So, I have the JS Fiddle, and I am going to make a GitHub repository for this particular widget. Now, I actually had John make an empty one for me, just so we can stay consistent with the fact that this began with Chili Pepper, and then I forked it. But you'd be just be making your own repository. And I like this naming format, widget-config-tinyg, because it's a widget. And then John also wrote me a nice uh, description that we will use a little bit later on. So let's get started. I've got Cloud9 open here, and this is the dashboard. Then I'm just going to press Repositories here on the left. And then right about here, we should have Widget-Config-TinyG, and I'm going to hit Clone to Edit. Give it a moment. And here we are. Now, I have my own repo here, raycolo slash widget dash empty. And if you recall uh, the part three of John's tutorial video series, he had a widget dash template that had actual useful code inside it so that you could hit the ground running on making your own widget. And there were nice links for uh, Cloud9 and all that fun stuff. What I've done is I've taken that and I've stripped it bare. And all we have in here is the bare minimum to take an HTML, a CSS, and a JavaScript file, just like you saw with the uh, JS Fiddle, and to squeeze it all together into one really, really big file that the entire world can access. So we kind of have to do some workarounds, because JS Fiddle did all this stuff for us automatically. So at some point in time, I hit download zip, and I have this open right here, widget empty master. So let me go into Cloud9, and hit file, Upload local files, open this folder up, and voila, we're going to drag it in. Yep, we have one, two, three, four files. Now to make it look like Fiddle, I'm going to press View, Layout, Cross Split, and now I have our quadrangle grid here. Quadrangle is not the right word, but I like saying it, so there we go. And I'm going to drag HTML into the uh, upper left, followed by CSS to the right. JavaScript at the bottom, and then when we go to open our preview, we will do that in this fourth box here. So notice JavaScript and CSS are empty, and HTML has this code up top. Well, what is it? JS Fiddle didn't have this. Right, this is how we get around not being able to use JS Fiddle anymore, because we wanted GitHub backing, and we wanted just nice control of what we did, and Cloud9 is a wonderful editor. So don't touch this, because this is how your code gets compiled. You remove something, you move something, it'll fail. But here in the body, we have what I need to do. So, 
I'm going to go into Fiddle and I'm going to select all of the HTML code. I'm going to copy it over. That's it. Now I'm going to highlight from the lower body tag to the upper body tag, but I'm not going to touch the head. And there's this wonderful key combination called Control Shift B. And it's just going to organize everything very nicely. Now everything is indented properly, so on. So we're going to continue. For CSS, we just copy and paste it in directly. There's no other place that it needs to be. There's only one way it can go in. I'll have to verify if this is an extraneous uh, brace here at some point in time later. JavaScript. <coughs> Are we done yet? No, almost. So in JavaScript, we have this section here inside cpdefine. These are properties. So the ID of the widget, this has to be unique. The URLs, so this is what we want to change momentarily because we're not going to be in Fiddle anymore. And we have runme.js, which is a uh, Node.js server, and it can actually auto-populate these for you. So we'll do that in a moment. And I want to change the description because this is outdated a little bit, and John wrote a nicer one. So, there we go. Copy that. Then I can paste that in here. And just note that it starts with a quote it ends with a quote and then there's a comma. So we've got that done. And now I have these four things here that I'm going to copy over and I will put these in the readme of the uh, widget empty repository just so that you have them but then no don't copy over the readme file because you'll have an additional file called readme.md. Copy these over. I'm going to select fiddle URL and URL. I'm going to remove them and then I am going to paste these in. And notice that there's no JS Fiddle references here, but there's also no GitHub or Cloud9 references here. This is all going to be done automatically. All we have to do is right click on runme.js and hit run. Now wait until debugger, this line shows up here, I don't care what that port is, and then I can go ahead click on this link and hit open in preview. Preview opens up here, I'm going to drag it into my fourth area here and voila. I don't even have to press push to GitHub. The moment you load this page, everything gets pushed to GitHub automatically. See, nothing to commit. Everything's up to date. And then I have links here. See, it does all this for you automatically. IDE.c9 for Cloud9, Raycolo, that's me, GitHub. So I can actually click this and it will take me to my GitHub where you can see 26 seconds ago everything got pushed. Voila. And then going back here, I can also test this. Uh, for certain things, we do have issues with secure HTTP, so we have to use the no SSL variant. So we're going to go for this last link right here. Make sure that runme.js is running in order for this to load up properly. See, everything looks perfect. Voila. Okay, so what's next? Well, I have my GitHub open, and I know everything works, so I'm just going to pull request this right back to Chili Pepper. Able to merge, everything's good. I'm going to create the pull request. I'm going to say integration complete. Create pull request. Everything is green and we're all happy. And eventually this will get pulled. Okay, so I just did probably one of the most minute widgets in Chili Pepper. But Ray, what about everything else? There's major things that need to get moved over. Yeah, they do. So check this out. Over the last three days, I've been, you know, not sleeping until maybe like three in the morning because config tiny g, WCS, tiny g, widget console, g code list, so on and so forth. Touch plate, shuttle express, JS cut, GPIO, SPJS, laser solder, programmer, eagle, so on and so forth. Auto level, zip whip, drag drop. Short story, this is now the 20th widget that I have moved over to GitHub. And check this out. We also have the entire Tiny G workspace running. So check this out. 
I'm going to rerun runme.js. I'm going to open in preview. And once again, I want this test URL no SSL. I click this, I have it open here. I'm going to refresh and note the URL. The entire Tiny G workspace is now running based off of Cloud9, and it's all sitting in GitHub, and we'll be able to move this over soon. Just to show you, well, you know what? I like to drag in a board at some times, but I'm just going to open up widgets right now. So zip whip works, auto level works, macro works. I'm actually going to load up a G code file, the Chili Pepper logo, voila. And here I have development open. So console, developer tools. I've done some trickery to make this always the window on top. And as I'm doing this, you should be able to see there's no errors. I have it filtering for errors right now. This is all of the information. These are all the things that is happening, but no errors. So we're actually doing pretty well. Voila. Thank you for watching. I will put links in the description for the uh, widget-empty. And I will host this somewhere else so that you guys can actually test out the Tiny G workspace for me and let me know if everything's working as you need it to. Thanks for watching. Later.